Hello and welcome to or welcome back to another video here on my channel, another book related video of course. Today I wanted to go over multiple different things. I wanted to one, do a flip through of my 2023 reading journal or book journal and then also go over my like templates of what I have now since I haven't started filling them out yet and I would like to start filling them out. And the third thing is basically like how you can make your own because I'm not doing it the traditional way where everybody normally has like their own journal, a bullet journal and they sit there and they draw and they write in it and do everything themselves. I already know that if I were to do that, no matter what, I would mess up and it would bug me so much that I would either have to tear out the page and redo both sides of the page potentially, or I would just end up not filling it out that much. I just wouldn't keep up with it as much and I definitely don't want to try and be creative every single month and try and figure out new spreads for that month. So I feel like this way for me and some other people might be really helpful, really easy to go about and also it's not like you need to spend any money besides potentially money to print things out There's not much that you actually have to spend if any if you already have all the supplies and it's very easy for me I stuck with it for six plus months and I didn't change a thing about it until this year this coming year for 2024 Like I said since I don't have a traditional one I actually use a binder and I print out my own templates that I made on Canva This is not sponsored by Canva and I also don't pay for Canva I do it completely free make my spreads look exactly like I want as best as I can at least and then I take those download them save them email them to myself and also I go ahead and print them out and that way if I ever need to reprint them out I have them in my email saved so without further ado now that I kind of rambled on a little bit let's go ahead and get into my journal Okay, like I said, I use a binder instead of my own little bullet journal. So when we first get into here, I have our new one. So before we get into the new setup, let's flip back and I put the old in the back just because I wanted it not in the very beginning. That's the other good thing about having one of these with the binder is you can easily move things around. You don't always have to have them in one spot. This was my original concept. I basically kept with the same concept, but just added to it a few different ways. And pretty much we have my information page. So of of course we have my ratings and I think I'm gonna keep these this year because I kind of like what I did for each star rating and then we have my individual book girls so of course we have number of books I wanted to read last year my physical books at the start of the year I did start this around this whole binder idea around June or so so I didn't have a physical count on my physical TBR just because I started halfway through the year so I just put I didn't count of course my physical TBR goal for the end of the year we actually hit that and then I have just little personal goals for like no by months and then new authors I wanted to read and then this was one of my favorite sections of this front page is I have favorite books of each month when we get to October you can kind of see I underlined it and put favorite this was my favorite book of the whole entire year and I personally love this page setup this is where it gets a lot messy so of course we have books to read I do kind of change this up a little bit but you can see majority of this this I actually got rid of and then I had a duplicate here otherwise majority of this was crossed off this was my physical TBR but not all of it it was 99 of it. I just had a few books that were down in the entertainment center that I didn't put on here. Every time I bought a book, I would add it to this list. If I read it, I would cross it off. I love that I did this concept, just I'm going to be doing it a little bit different, so it's a little neater, but the overall template is still the same. And then the next page, you'll see my reading log. We just have six major kind of like categories. We have my date started and finished, the title of the book, the author of the book, the genre of the book, the number of pages in that book that I physically read because I usually only read physical reads and not audiobook or anything like that. And then I just have my rating. This system works great for me. And last year I had one, five, 10, 15, 20, all the way up to actually 60. And this was because I had a second goal. My overall goal was 25 books, but after I hit 25 books, I wanted to hit 60 books read. And so I did end up marking them on the side so I knew how many I read. Minus that this Hogwarts library, I added three books in one. So if you go to this page, you'll see that I'm two books shy. That's because I combined the three books on one slot, I really actually hit 60. And then after my reading log, I just have my yearly wrap up. So of course we had our year. This was a little bit messed up because I had to reprint it the day that we were going to film my end of the year. So I didn't fix this, I just printed it. And I honestly am probably not going to fix it. We just have the original book goal for this year, of course was 25. And then I put how many books I read this year with the percentage. Since I read so much more than my overall goal, I added the percentage to that just because I thought it was kind of useful information. And then we have how many books I did not finish 
finish, I kind of like softy enough to one book that I wanted to read in 2024 because I was in a slump. Otherwise, then I put five star reads or how many five star reads I had. Then on Goodreads, I had my most rated and my least rated book that I read of the year with also the star rating. And then my longest and shortest book read, which I got from all of these right here. Instead of on Goodreads, because this book, the shortest book I read, which was part of the Narnia series, it's The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. My copy only had 86 pages. On Goodreads, it's like 200 or so. So I stuck with my information versus what was on Goodreads. And then I have my most read genres. I originally just was going to do my top five potentially genres, but then I decided I was just going to write all of them out. And I also put the number beside each one. Then I had my favorite genres, my favorite series, and any books that surprised me. So now let's get into this year's. Like I said, I'm re-keeping some of these. Majority of these templates are going to be the exact same, but I just changed a few things. One thing was originally I had these boxes behind some things just to kind of make it a little bit different because we only have a black and white printer and I can't add color. So I use a color marker to fill in like I did blue last year. And I just kind of have different shades of black and gray to kind of help add a little bit more detail to the page. These boxes were just a little too light. So I darkened them up. And then the only other change I did was I added any other goals and a three lines for that right there, just in case. Here's where I started making a few more changes. We have my physical TBR and books to read now. It's not just books to read. This is where I'm going to put every single book on my physical TBR. And honestly, I don't think I have 94. Actually, I have another page behind there that I just went ahead and printed off. I do believe it went all the way up to 146. I don't have that many physical books, but let's just say I have 50 books read or 50 physical books and I get to read all of them. I can cross off all the way up to 50, but let's say all of a sudden I get so much money and I decide across the year, you know, to spend and buy, I don't know, 50 more books. And then I run out of room. That's the only reason I kind of had so many slots is I wanted to put, if I bought any single book at all, I wanted to instantly put it on this list. And that way I knew, hey, I still have to read this book. And also I just wanted to kind of cross them off. And I kind of wanted to do the diagonal again. If I have to cross a book off because I'm not reading it or I got rid of it, I want to kind of make it more clean when I do that. I just haven't figured out how I'm going to do that. Hopefully I won't have to do that at all. Basically, I just want to track all of my physical TBR and see how much of that physical TBR I read because last year's I really enjoyed looking at how much I got to cross off my list. Then I added two new sheets or two new pieces of paper. Both of these are kind of like goal pages. So first, of course, we have the 24 books I want to read in 2024 and I wanted to add in or include all my 24 books. Maybe just add a little check mark at the end of it or at the beginning of one if I did go ahead and read that. And same with the book goal tracker. I just have squares. I don't have many. I only have 70, but I just have squares to fill in. Since last year, my goal was 25 and then I set a second goal at 60. This year, my book goal is only 20. So I put that as my 2024 book goal. And then I also added a second 2024 book goal down here at 55. That's just like a little, oh, if I could get there, that would be awesome. If I don't, oh, that sucks because 2024 is a major year for us. We're moving. We have career changes. We have a lot of things going on in 2024. So I kept my book goal a little bit lower this year. And also I only put this up to 70 books because last year at 60 books was the most I ever read. And I don't think next year or this year in 2024, I'm going to read all of these books, to be honest. Then we have my reading log. This is the exact same setup as last year. I also have a second page behind there that I'm just kind of hiding until I fill this up and then I will pull it out and move all the papers away from where I need them. And then this year I added in a separate page for my genres. So I just have a little genre tracker that I'm going to use with this. One of the reasons I added this page is because at the end of the year, I went through and I picked the first genre that I wrote down on each book. And that's how I got my genres for the end, like the whole wrap up. And this year I kind of want to do where I only write one genre down, but then I also do it over here and I can mark it off. And that way it's easier at the end of the year to kind of tally them up and see which ones are my top. I just have autobiography, biography, Christian, sci-fi, YA sci-fi, because I like having the YA versus the adult, just kind of separate for my genres. Then we have thriller, mystery, dystopian, and then other. I don't know if I would have another, but I just put that in just in case. Romance, fiction, YA fiction, fantasy, and also YA fantasy. My last two pages are, of course, my 2024 reading stats. This was another thing that I thought would help me out for the wrap up. I just put books read, pages read, and also how many five-star reads. I just kept it kind of simple because I don't need anything too crazy. And I just did it for each month. And then that way, I, when it comes over here, I can easily be like, oh, I read five stars this whole year, you know, because I read one in January, one in June, and three in November. So I'll write them all down here. And then with the books read, that'll be easy, but I can just put number of books read this year. And then with the pages, that was a major 
major thing because I also last year went back to my reading log and I added up all of my pages, but it would be easier just to add up like the monthly pages instead. And also I feel like on the monthly wrap ups, I used to do a lot of page statistics, like how many pages I read. So I feel like it might be a good thing to kind of include on this page. So then if I do any monthly wrap ups, it's easy and I can include that as well. And then the only other thing that I changed on the last page, I just darkened up these boxes like I did on the other pages. For the third and final part of this video, I just kind of want to talk about how you can do your own. I did screen record a little bit of how I was making this book journal this year or these templates. And let me just tell you first off, when I screen recorded, it is using an iPad. I use the computer a lot and these are like short. They're just a little bit of clips. There's not too much that I really did. Like I said, cause I started last year, I made my own templates. You can see some of the changes that I did where I just fixed some of like the titles, like with the physical TBR and books to read. I just basically wanted to update and make it a little bit better because last year was a good test run. And this year I feel like I know what I want a little bit more. Super easy and simple. Like I said, you don't need to pay for Canva in order to actually use Canva. And also all of this was free and I mainly used my computer, but I did get it on a mobile, just like an iPad. So you can kind of see where I fix a few things. I like this system a lot because if I ever wanted something added to my book journal, I don't have to worry about potentially trying to squeeze it in or restarting. I can go into Canva, add it to my paper that I want, whichever page I want, and then just reprint it if I really wanted to. The 24 books I read in 2024, I kind of tried showing a little bit of how I did it. I was having fun, let's just say, on the iPad. I did not like the iPad as much as using a computer, but that's because I'm used to a mouse and my iPad was also having screen problems because it's very old and very well loved. The best thing in my opinion about doing it my way instead of doing it in an actual journal is if you're kind of like me and sometimes creative, but a lot of the times you're kind of lazy or maybe aren't as creative every single time and you don't know what to do, this is a good way because you can either have templates already pre-designed or you can just kind of play around and it's not permanent. You can get rid of it, delete it if you want, or you can have multiple versions and see which one you like the most instead of spending hours creating one page. And that's one reason I did this system is I just didn't want to spend so much time and potential money on supplies to make everything the way I wanted it. And I also just mainly just wanted everything simplified. And I feel like doing it simplified in a binder was so much better. Everybody has different opinions, so to each their own. I just wanted to make this video to help you just in case if you struggle with making your own book journals and you didn't know what to do and you didn't want to buy a $30, $40 one that's pre-made. That's the main reason. I just wanted to help people out. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And also I hope if you aren't really big on trying to do your own journal, like writing it out and drawing everything out, I hope that if this suited you a little bit more, I hope that this video helped you out. I hope you got a few ideas. And if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. I will definitely get to you. As always, be sure to subscribe, look at any videos here on my channel, down in the description, I have a whole book playlist. I also have other videos on my channel, not just pertaining to books. So if you're curious, go check those out. And I hope to see y'all here in the next video and God bless.